My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCahn.com. This podcast is entitled, Blockchain is Gunning for Oil and Gas. With the latest ramp in media stories about Facebook exploring the use of blockchain for its platform, I thought it timely to revisit how oil and gas could take advantage of this technology. What exactly is blockchain? A blockchain is a digital solution to one of modern society's basic problems, that we can't always trust everyone, or that we shouldn't. Think about it. When we buy houses, we have to retain lawyers in the middle of the transaction to file all the necessary paperwork and keep all the parties honest. That's an extreme example, but there's low trust in simpler kinds of transactions, like buying things. That's why buyers issue purchase orders, shippers issue packing lists, sellers submit invoices, and banks release funds, all of which are wrapped up in agreements, contract terms, and numbering schemes that enforce tracking, delivery, and payment. Our privacy laws and confidential information rules are all linked to this question of trust. The whole notion of a privacy law is predicated on the lack of trust between parties and the risk that one or the other might reveal some confidential information when it suits them. Would I hand over my health records to a hospital if I think they might hand my state of health to my insurance company? Possibly not. We all have some horror story we can tell about some deal that fell through because the trust was there, but perhaps not the verification, thinking Bernie Madoff. We build elaborate mechanisms to verify the relationship, overdoing it for some and underbaking it for others. But with the power of global telecommunications networks and cloud computing, some bright spark came up with a nifty way to create highly trustworthy shared information and called it blockchain. A blockchain is a shared ledger, structured and encrypted in such a way that it is very hard to subvert. Ledgers are just simply duplicated sets of documents, a block of documents in a chain, housed by a number of participants in some kind of a relationship. Documents can only be added as a block to the chain, or existing blocks changed, if all the participants agree. This makes the chain very hard to tamper with because so many parties are involved, and the blocks are all linked to one another through encryption. Well, why bother with blockchain? The reason for using blockchain is because it represents an opportunity to dramatically lower cost and reduce misunderstandings, disputes, and fraud. A not insignificant amount of overhead in a standard company is devoted to the various means we put in place to ensure trust with counterparties and to minimize the costs of eventual misunderstandings, disputes, and frauds. This includes writing and tracking all the outside contracts we have in place, the reporting we do for compliance, and the monitoring we impose on ourselves and on our service providers. And of course, all the associated paperwork. Not only is the volume of such tracking and compliance accelerating, the people hired for this job are actually higher skill and higher cost than the clerical staff of the past. This burden has been growing dramatically. An economics outfit in Australia calculated that for the Australian economy, the entire gains from reducing clerical staff through automation over the past decade have been more than offset by the addition of new checkers and trackers. It's a drain on productivity and an inflator of cost. And if there's something oil and gas does not need right now, it's business practices that lower productivity and increase cost. So who is using blockchain today? Well, there's heaps of developments going on in blockchain because there are so many places in society where counterparties transact in a relationship that is characterized by low trust and the pressures to improve cost and productivity are intense. Two leading uses are in banking and healthcare. Banking is a leader because banks exchange funds with each other as they settle transactions, the buy and sell agreements, between their various customers. Banks wire each other money through exchanges or directly to settle a transaction. They wrap complex systems and management mechanisms around these transactions to make sure the dealings are honest. I can imagine entire bank departments full of compliance checkers, contract writers and verifiers, accountants and lawyers whose roles are to make sure the transactions happen as they're supposed to. Banks generally don't like the exposure that comes from getting ripped off because a counterparty won't honor a deal. During a disease outbreak such as Ebola, Hospitals and government agencies will begin to assemble data about the intensity of the outbreak, locations and hotspots, strains of the disease, rate of spread, hospitalization rates, 
mortality, and so on. Privacy laws sometimes prevent this information from being released, and so social response is delayed. But if this information could be released in a form where privacy is protected, it could help accelerate social outcomes. Immunizations, treatments, and medicine delivery. That's where blockchain comes in. Blockchain technology allows this private health data to be published, but in a format that protects the privacy of the source of the information. The data cannot be used, copied, or shared without the blockchain. Well, why oil and gas? The way I see it, the oil and gas industry represents a particularly compelling opportunity to leverage blockchain because there are so many places in oil and gas where counterparties have low levels of trust, where the stakes can be high, that is, the value at stake can be very substantial, and where pressures to reduce cost and improve productivity are intense. Here's a handful of ways blockchain could be pressed into service in oil and gas. Land transactions. Oil and gas companies need to acquire rights to access land to prospect for, explore, appraise, and then produce oil and gas. The counterparties are often individual landowners who have limited exposure to oil and gas and may be outgunned in land dealings. There's even a phrase, shady land deal, to describe this process. Blockchain could be used to verify and eliminate fraudulent land deals. Oil and gas sales. Oil and gas is sold in large volumes and as such entails significant value, not unlike the size and scale of transactions between banks. The frequency of transactions is manageable. A 300,000 barrel a day oil refinery will need to source a very large crude carrier every week to maintain adequate throughput. And those cargoes can cost as much as $100 million. That's 2 million barrels at $50 a barrel. Oil companies also need to be aware of who they're sourcing from. Some exporting nations are, from time to time, under sanctions to prevent trade in this commodity. Blockchain could ease oil sales in the same fashion that it is facilitating banking transactions. Complex sourcing Oil and gas contracting can be complex with very lengthy contracts and agreements. For one of my own projects in Australia, the typical contract length was in excess of 80 pages, for work that might only last 20 days. It's very typical that a contract is adjusted by a change order that needs to be tracked. One LNG project that I worked with was faced with the problem of contracts dating back years to the original project start date, but not in force until the LNG shipment started. All manner of inconsistencies began to crop up, and it wasn't clear what contract was in force over what situation. Capital Project Spend a major capital project in oil and gas could be $20 billion, spread out across five key EPC contracts and extending down to dozens of other purchase and sale agreements. Attention to the contract is key to make sure that suppliers don't substitute where they shouldn't and that the contract terms are being honored. There would be significant savings from elimination of lawsuits in the industry, where operators and EPC firms no longer have disagreements about their contracts, a problem potentially solved by blockchain. Joint ventures. Oil and gas company ventures are another blockchain candidate. The ventures are comprised of complex agreements that need to withstand the ups and downs in the industry and are the basis for the sharing of costs and revenues from the venture. Most have audit clauses in them, giving the parties the rights to audit each other to make sure that all are in compliance with the contract. I can imagine a scenario where these audits are simply not necessary because of the contracting details are stored on blockchain. Last but not least, service contracts. I worked on a service company bankruptcy file a couple of years ago. For months, the operator gave verbal instructions to the service company for changes to work, which were unfortunately not backed up with paper. The service company ran out of money and attempted to collect for these verbal orders, only to be told that the verbal instructions were not contractual and therefore not collectible. All the subcontractors were also impacted. This could also have been avoided through the use of blockchain. So blockchain technology is coming. Companies in oil and gas need to, number one, get smart on this technology and how it might impact the industry. Number two, participate in the various working groups exploring blockchain and its deployments. And number three, launch a trial with some existing trusted business partners to learn how it works and the value that it can create. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. 
You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas, on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.